Hi, I'm Sean Carruthers, and welcome to How Do I on Butterscotch.com. In this series, we're taking a look at GarageBand running on the iPad. In this part of the series, we're actually going to take a look at how GarageBand handles software stringed instruments like guitar and bass. Now, unlike with keyboards and drums, GarageBand only lets you play smart instruments for the guitar and the bass. While you can still pick them string by string if you really want to, it doesn't offer separate options for that here on the instrument screen. Swipe on over on the instrument screen until you get to the guitar strings inside a gear. Tap on that to open it up. Once you tap on that to open it up, it'll open up a screen similar to the smart keyboards with all of these chords listed in towers. Now, instead of keyboard keys, what this correlates to here is strings on the guitar. You can swipe your fingers through the tower to play the strings listed in the chord at the top of the tower. You can also tap to hit one string inside or hit more than one string at the same time. And if you prefer, you can actually tap the name of the chord right at the top of the tower and it'll play all strings simultaneously, which actually sounds a little bit unnatural, so you may want to avoid doing that if you can. Like with the smart keyboards, you also have the ability to autoplay here. Turn the autoplay knob over to one of the other numbers to get a different type of pattern. Then when you tap on one of the vertical towers, it will automatically start to play notes in that key. You can switch between the different keys by tapping on different towers. Now you can tap on the name of the guitar and switch to a different type of guitar, and then it'll change the way it autoplays depending on what type of guitar you've chosen. If you choose one of the electric guitars, you also have a few pedals to choose from to change the sound that you're getting. You can tap on the effects pedals to turn those effects on and off. Now if you really, really want to go freestyle here, you can change the option over at the far right hand side from chords to notes, and this will give you a more traditional guitar fretboard. Now instead of strumming to play here, you'll just tap in this section on the fret where you want to play the note, and then it'll automatically play it. You can actually press a note and bend it like you can on a real guitar. Again, it's not as expressive here as it would be on a real guitar, but you do have that option. As with the keyboards, you can simplify this a whole lot by pressing scale, and then choosing one of the different scale types off to the side here. Now this may not be as intuitive here as playing it this way on the keyboard, but you do have the option to eliminate a bunch of notes that won't fit into that scale and play a little bit more stylistically here. Now Smart Bass works very much the same way as the guitar. On the instrument screen you swipe on over to Smart Bass, it's the four strings inside a gear icon. Again it'll open up with towers, but instead of six notes you have four notes to choose from in these towers. You can play them one by one or together. Again you can switch the type of bass by tapping on it and choosing a different type. And you can turn autoplay on and off and change the patterns by changing the numbers. And like under the guitar, you can change the switch from chords to notes and actually play the bass using the fretboard style playing that you play on a real bass. Again, you have the ability to restrict the notes that will appear here by tapping on scale and changing one of the scales. And then you can play a little bit more stylistically. Let's look at smart guitar and smart bass for GarageBand on the iPad. You can see how some of the other instruments work on the other parts in this series. You can check out the show notes for this and the other parts in the series at butterscotch.com.